Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new edition of Hugh Spotlight and it is my honor and pleasure to welcome the legendary Sylvia Tyson to Hugh Spotlight. Welcome Sylvia. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining. Yes, and so congratulations, your new album, um, continuing to do amazing work at the end of the day. Uh, so I have to ask, has this album been different from all the rest that you've done? Well, it's different in that I really haven't recorded a solo album for about 10 or 15 years. <laughs> so I thought it was time. And I had a dozen songs that I had never recorded. So I had enough material and I got together with uh, Danny Greenspoon, my producer, who also played in my band for many years. Oh, and uh, the, this was the result. He did, a, he did an amazing job because the songs are quite diverse. Mm -hmm. But uh, he put together um, uh, a musical ensemble that kind of pulled it all together. Was it a little scary at first, Sylvia, or is it just like riding the bike? You just get on and you go. Well, I've, I've been in the studio once or twice. so <laughs> yeah, yeah, not your first rodeo, <laughs> but... <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, it was quite comfortable, and and Good. and uh, Danny made it even more comfortable because the, the musicians have all had their arrangements and and had had uh, heard demos of the tunes and were familiar with the material, so it all went extremely smoothly. We recorded twelve songs in three days, which is some kind of record. Oh, I think so. Now, when you look at or when you hear your songs, these songs in particular, Sylvia, uh, do they resonate with you differently? than the songs that you've written in the past, or is it the same? I, uh, I don't know. Um, they uh, definitely they are songs of myself as a more mature human being. <laughs> I think that's safe to say. Um, but uh, of course, I don't have any apologies apologies for anything I've written in the past. Yeah. But I think that these are are very developed songs and have have a lot to say no and I, I guess more personal for you this album i i think it is pretty personal although uh the the songs like like most of my songs have some kind of story behind them and in some ways the person in the story is not me <laughs> so <laughs> okay it is about you but it's not about you so it's not a, right. a yeah, an autobiography Okay, no, but, no, not in the least. Um, but you are a, a master of words, um, you know, and you had written or you have said that words come to you first, or is it the music? It's it's always the words first. Mm -hmm. um, I can write a good melody, but it's harder work for me. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, I, I've always had a thing about about words. As a matter of fact, I'm 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 a bit uh, militant about them and 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 misuse of words kind of uh, kind of upsets me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll come to it later because I think there's an interesting story about the title of your album at the end of the day. But mm -hmm. well, I want to ask you now because words are so important to you, the music of today. Mm, and I have to admit, and whatever, mm, there are a lot of songs out there that I don't think they wrote or even thought of the words first. I, I think a lot of the material now has to do with with things that I, I never really considered, um, you know, uh, that, that they're good to dance to, um, <laughs> that uh, that they're good for a stadium show with, with a lot of uh, flashing lights and, and fireworks. And also a lot more attention that, than I like to vocal pyrotechnics. You know, it, it just <laughs> seems like, as a songwriter, I feel that the singer owes it to the songwriter to state the melody at least once and possibly twice at the beginning <laughs> and the end of the song. <laughs> oh, and not it be the whole song. Oh, you know what? It, you, if you go back and you look at your catalog of work and the breadth of it, and also we have to touch on too and how immense and important and influence you and your ex-husband Ian were in the days of Ian and Sylvia. You were the basis of folk music and, and moving it forward. When you look back, Sylvia, would you have done anything differently? 
I I don't think so. Um, I, you just do what you do at the time. And uh, I have to say, I'm not very nostalgic. And, <laughs> and for me, the past is a great place to visit, but I don't want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear you. I hear you. And that, that is so refreshing. And I think uh, we can all learn from that, right? Well, it's, it's just the way I feel. I mean, I think that Ian and I did great work. I'm, I have no apologies for any piece of material we ever did. You know, I, I, think, I think those albums really stand up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that the same is, is true of what I have done since then. Well, truly, and, we, and to say that you went on to a fantastic solo career, and not only in music, but as a broadcaster and a TV personality. And through all of that, Sylvia, now where you, where you are today, what in your mind has made a big, the biggest influence on you, besides music, maybe? Oh, you might, have, you might have stumped me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, whatever comes to mind, but you've done it all. But, you know, there must be like a moment or, or somebody that really has made it special. Well, there, there are people that, whose, whose music I have enjoyed. I don't listen to a lot of current music, quite frankly, mm -hmm. because I've absorbed all of my influences, I think. <laughs> yes. And... Uh, <laughs> and most of the most of the performers I care about are, are either dead or retired. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and uh, so so it's always been it's always been music that influenced me. I haven't mm -hmm. really had a lot of outside influences, and and I've done whatever I needed to do in order to to create music and to put together the music that that I wanted to put out. And so that's really been my focus. Oh. And what songs stand out for you on At the End of the Day? Well, the title tune, certainly. Mm -hmm. the, the few few times I performed it live, people have actually cried, which I found mm -hmm. extraordinary. Um, a Sweet Agony, which is the, uh, the video that's, that's coming up, I co-wrote with Cindy Church. As a matter of fact, I co-wrote three songs with Cindy on the album and uh, that that says to me a lot because it's not a love song it's a song about love mm -hmm. and all its various permutations and ups and downs um a, a song that seemed to be getting a lot of play and i was quite surprised about this one called uh, um leaves in the storm mm -hmm. because that's very much time and place it's it's about the period just after the Second World War and, and a couple that that are ill-matched but get together. And it's uh, it's very uh, kind of Kurt Weill, Lottie Lania. <laughs> and it's, and, it's uh, and, and I, I am quite surprised that it's getting as much play as it is. I thought, you know, it'd be a good album tune, but but not not one that would get a lot of uh, a lot of play. Oh, and is it still I mean, it has to be still wonderful when you can hear your songs being played or when somebody says, I love that song, that's the true payback? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the po whole point of the exercise is to communicate and, and to, to put these songs across to people and, and to hope that they, they hear something in it that, that resonates with them. You know, the, either that they've known somebody like that or they've had something like that happen to them mm -hmm. or that's something in their own history. You know, that's really what I aim for. Oh, amazing. Okay, so I'm going to get back to now the title. At the end of the day, um, it's, a, it's a cute little story on how that whole <laughs> phrase came to be. <laughs> well, I, I have to say that of all the things that I dislike about Donald Trump, one of them is... <laughs> is that he turned me into a news junkie. <laughs> oh, well, not just you, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and that one of the things that really started to bother me is that so much of the news now is, is not news, it's opinion. Mm -hmm. And you get all these people talking about what they think is the case, you know, and they're, they're always saying, well, at the end of the day, this is going to happen, or at the end of the day, that was true, you know, or I think this is what's going on at the end of the day. And I thought they're just throwing that phrase away, and that phrase has a much deeper 
meaning if you really start to look at it. So that was the basis on which I, uh, I wrote the song. Oh, always the master at storytelling. So uh, yeah, we'll keep that story. That's, that's a keeper. Uh, finally, is this going to be the final album, Sylvia, or is there still more music in you? Well, I probably have more music in me, but I don't know if I have another album in me because I'm, I'm not somebody who whips off songs in a hurry. <laughs> they take me a long time. And the songs on this album were written over like 10, 15 years. And uh, I mean, in, in another 10 or 15 years, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a beautiful album. And again, thank you so much for giving all of us your music and uh, please like enjoy this one and I'm gonna let Sylvia you can introduce the video Sweet Agony Agony Sweet Agony I wrote with Cindy Church who of course was uh, worked with me in quartet and uh, we wrote uh, three songs together on this album um, and Cindy of course has performed this many times it's it's a uh, as I say, it's a, it's a song that's about love rather than being a love song. God knows there are a lot of love songs <laughs> and about every aspects of love, but this, this sort of covers all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you again, Sylvia. Here's your video, Sweet Agony, and when we come back, I'll have an interview with Afros. <laughs> Come to me, sweet agony, I am ready to fall in love again, if I can have that ecstasy, I'll take my chances. With the pain love gives, or it takes away. Oh, love can hurt, or it can heal you. It's a gamble we all take, and we live with our mistakes. It's both a curse and a rescue. Is love steadfast or is it fleeting? Lifetime devotion or random meeting? We're all floundering fools in a game with no rules. What magic makes it?
Well, it certainly is exciting times for the artist Afros. Welcome to Hugh Spotlight, Afros. Uh, album is out. They had a re release party. Uh, how much of a load off your shoulders is it today for you? Gosh. <laughs> It's it's been a day. I I think when I got home from the release party last night, I think my body just shut down. <laughs> it was just like, like okay, we're going to make you like sick. We're going to make you I, I just feel I'm I'm feeling okay today, but it's just I feel so tired. It's like all of the exhaustion and the lead up and the preparation and everything that goes into a rollout plan. It just, it just caught up to me. And, and so I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I'm like, okay, the album's out now. Uh, but so it's, it, it feels good, but it also feels like I need to sleep for a million years. <laughs> well, you know what? And let's talk about the process for you. You're no stranger to music and you're, you perf you've performed with so many different artists, well-known. Um, and you yourself have had a lot of acclaim, but it always is hard, isn't it? No matter whether it's the first album or the 30th album, right? Yes. It just, I think every single time you, you make an album or an EP or you're releasing something, it just, it kind of gets like, it's a, it's a little bit like a, a snowball effect. Like the, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and there's more people that become involved and your team grows and the strategy is sometimes you know it, it's it's beyond what you are even capable within yourself so it's just yeah like i don't think it matters like at, what, at whatever stage you are i mean maybe maybe when you're at beyonce level like this, <laughs> yeah oh. uh, you know they everything is is planned out for her but I, she is also such a, a hard worker herself as well mm -hmm. like I've watched so many of those documentaries where you get to see the uh the process and it is a process well that's pretty cool when you can watch a Beyonce doc and then you yourself going through the same thing and experiencing all of that now this new album let's talk about how it really hits home for you I guess in a way and is this really more in tune to what Afro's sound is going to be? Absolutely. I mean, it's a it's an amalgamation of so many different sounds, <laughs> um, and it's a lot of the sounds and the genres of music that I grew up listening to, and and that formed me. And so this album feels like my truest self. It's the truest offering of myself that I have to date. And it deals with elements of grief and of birth. Literally, I gave birth to my daughter in 2020 and changed my life. And, mm -hmm. and um, I lost my grandmother, uh, who the, the song Roses is about in 2018. So it, it's like it's about life and death and loss and 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 beauty and rebirth and honoring your family and struggles between uh, you and your partner or you and friends and so it kind of examines what it means to to be human I think oh and that's so so beautiful and if you look at yourself now and to where you were before say. 10 years ago, how have you grown, not only as a person, Afros, but I guess, obviously, too, as an artist? I feel a sense of confidence that I've never felt before. Uh, 10 years ago, I was still really finding my way and, mm -hmm. and finding my sound and experimenting and Actually, 10 years ago, I wasn't really doing this project. I, the Afros project wasn't even a thing then. <laughs> I was doing a lot of session work with other artists, doing a lot of jobbing gigs, uh, like corporate things and weddings, and just learning the ropes of, of the industry and and as a vocalist. And, and I was writing that entire time, but 
I didn't really feel that confidence to just like go for it as an artist. Um, and so I would say in 2017 was when I conceptualized the Afros project. And from then it's just blossomed into what it is today. And, and I look back and I, I marvel at how much growth there is, how much growth has, has happened, you know, and then I am not the same person and I'm, I'm really proud of, of where I'm at right now. Oh, would you consider yourself maybe a role model for you know, young women, women of color in the music industry? I hope to be, I aspire to be a role model to young women in the industry, especially BIPOC women. The industry isn't desi designed for us, you know, it, it's, there aren't a lot of spaces for us to fit in. And so I do take my platform and very seriously in, in that it is my, I feel like it's my, my duty to inspire and mentor uh, singers coming up. I, I teach at, at a college here in Toronto and I teach voice, private lesson voice. I'm a private lesson voice teacher and I have a lot of you know, young students in their early 20s and they're, they're starting out and I take that role so seriously because I know they look up to me. I know they see themselves in me and and yeah, like I, I hope to always inspire through my art. <laughs> well, let's now talk about the album and your grandmother, because she obviously has played a very important role in your own personal life and the song Roses. And also your grandmother is part of the album, as in her voice. Yes, she, it's, it's kind of got a very magical um, vibe to it, this album. So throughout the album, there are sound bites of my grandmother, either like there's a few where she's praying <laughs> and there's a few where she's just like being sassy to my grandpa. <laughs> and and these are sound bites that were taken off of um, old home videos that my dad took of us growing up. Like who knew that he would, he, he just documented our lives. And you know, <laughs> when I got into my like teenage years, I'd always be like, dad, stop, put the camera away. <laughs> but it, it's almost like it, it, it's a full circle moment. And, and all of those memories, I went down memory lane when I was compiling video clips for the album and the audio and the video for roses and oh my gosh it was like it was it was like i went in, back in time and 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 i was looking at all these all this footage of my childhood and of my grandparents and my my family and and it just it, it i i knew that we had something special and it had to be a part of this album so in a lot of ways, you know, I've involved my family in the making of this album because my grandma's voice is on there and my dad's videos are 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 on there too, or like we've taken sound bites from there. So it's it's it feels really close to home and it feels really special. Oh, no doubt. Well, we are soon going to see the video roses, but I want to ask you now. You have a daughter. Yes. What would you like to, I guess, instill in her as she watches you, you know, with your career and singing and music? And also, too, what messaging or what thing from your grandmother would you like to pass on to your daughter? I want her to know that she can, she can do anything. That she puts her mind to. I was never limited growing up. I was never held back. I was never told no, that you can't do music. And I know what a great gift that is to have supportive family, supportive parents, supportive grandparents, aunts, uncles, because not everyone is blessed with that support. So I want her to know that whatever path she walks down, 
I'm going to be there for her. I'm going to support her decisions just like my mom and my grandma and all the amazing strong women in my family have supported me. It's important to me that she knows and she sees that. Oh, awesome. Now, I'm going to let you introduce the video, Roses, the little story behind it, and of course, what made your grandmother so special to you. Okay. So, Roses, the music video, is a dreamlike um, story of, of finding this pool of water where I look into it and I get to relive moments with my grandmother in my childhood. And there are home videos that I spoke of earlier that were projected into this pool of water. Everything you see in terms of the images in the water were done in real time. They were projected into the water. They weren't done in post. Um, and and yeah, it's it's a tribute to her and her spirit and her legacy. And I hope she's watching and smiling and, and is proud of me. And and it's dedicated to anyone that has lost has lost a very beloved uh, family member. It's oh. dedicated to to you as well. Oh, well we wanna thank you, Afros, for joining us. You've got such an incredible voice, a beautiful story and a fantastic album. We wish you all the success. Let us know when you're passing through here and we'll be for sure able to catch up with you and spend some more time with you. But thank you for now, everyone. Here is the video, Roses. Looking back.